Reading the Times for Sunday, January 5th, 2020. Reading the Times for Sunday, January 5th, 2020. As tensions with Iran escalated, Trump opted for most extreme measure. Days, weeks, General Mark A. Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said on Friday when asked how imminent any attacks could be without offering more detail other than to say that new information about unspecified plotting was clear and unambiguous. But some officials voiced private skepticism about the rationale for a strike on General Soleimani, who was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of American troops over the years. According to one United States official, The new intelligence indicated a normal Monday in the Middle East, December 30th, and General Soleimani's travels amounted to business as usual. That official described the intelligence as thin and said that General Soleimani's attack was not imminent because of communications the United States had between Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei and General Soleimani, showing that the Ayatollah had not yet approved any plans by the general for an attack. In Palm Beach, Florida, Mr. Trump lashed back, promising to strike 52 sites across Iran, representing the number of American hostages taken by Iran in 1979, if Iran attacked Americans or American interests. An era of perpetual conflict, a volatile president grabs expanded powers to make war. President Trump's decision to authorize the killing of a top Iranian military leader could be the match that sets off a regional conflagration, or it could have only marginal geopolitical impact, like so many of the targeted killings ordered by Mr. Trump and his predecessors. Amid criticism for the botched raid, Mr. Trump put blame on military commanders who, he said, lost Ryan. Twice, Mr. Trump ordered cruise missile attacks against the government of President Bashar al-Assad in Syria in retaliation for chemical attacks on civilians there, something that Mr. Obama decided against. One of Mr. Trump's former national security advisors, John R. Bolton, who was pushed out in September because the president considered him an irritant and too much of a hawk, was suddenly praising Mr. Trump on Friday. Iranians close ranks behind leaders after U.S. kills popular general. Iran's relative moderates, like Mr. Rouhani, have been on the defensive since Mr. Trump withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal and imposed an array of sanctions contributing to Iran's sharp economic decline. Qasim Soleimani has been seen as the public face of Iran's regional policy, said Sanam Vakil a senior research fellow and leader of the Iran Forum at Chatham House, an international affairs institute based in London. Many Iranians, whether they like the regime or not, did consider Soleimani as a sort of national symbol, said Raz Zimt, an Iran specialist at the Institute for National Security Studies in Tel Aviv, and they see his assassination as something that hurts national pride. Mahmoud Dalatab Badi, a prominent Iranian author who has spoken out for artistic freedom, wrote that Iran once again lost one of its most honorable children. Since Mr. Trump's withdrawal from the nuclear deal, Iran has revived its nuclear program in stages amid escalating conflicts with the United States. It's an atomic bomb. Australia deploys military as fires spread. More than 12 million acres have burned so far, an area larger than Switzerland, and the damage is expected to only get worse in the extremely arid conditions that are allowing the fires to spread. The fires are also so hot and so large that they are creating their own weather patterns, which can worsen the conditions. The fires are blazing ferociously along Australia's eastern coast, as well as South Australia, Tasmania, 
and parts of Western Australia. Although their home in Warriji was not in direct line of fire, they had arrived here on Tuesday night, having lived through a bushfire in 2017. Right-wing views for Generation Z, five minutes at a time. Give us five minutes, PragerU began in 2009 as a nonprofit to promote the conservative religious values of Mr. Prager, a popular talk radio host and author of books on Judaism. If conservatives don't jump into culture headfirst, we're not going to make much of a difference, she said, and PragerU understands that. Prager leaders say many of their young fans come from liberal homes, and the key for their mission is to reach these people and rescue them from what they describe as liberal indoctrination. What they're trying to do is get away from this narrative that's really out there, that America's bad, and it's just this negative thing, said Trevor Mock, a 19-year-old Cal Berkeley sophomore from Barstow, California, and a fan of PragerU. They give the reasons why it's good to be proud of the country and proud of where you're from and who you are. He added, they're talking about things I was never taught. Until PragerU came along, some of the biggest platforms for young conservatives looking for content were Fox News and online message boards, where fringe conspiracy theorists reign. Troubles at an aging steel mill mirror Italy's own. In the boom years of the 1970s and 1980s, so many Italians had jobs connected to the business that Ronaldo Melucci, the mayor of Taranto, where the factory is located, called the town the Milan of the South. In 1995, the Riva family, an Italian steel producer, bought the factory. In April, the government, led by the populist Five Star Movement, which has long attacked the factory, announced plans to end the immunity agreement, a move that Arcelor Lor Mittal said would amount to a breach of agreement and prompt the company to leave the factory. In the wood-paneled offices of the local industry association, Antonio Marinero, its president, said the government's propensity for anti-business protests rather than constructive action had created an air of uncertainty and instability. In the rundown neighborhoods around the factory, where the management's windows sported new protective bars, Residents talked of being forced to choose between their health and the jobs. A revolution in Jewish learning with women driving the charge. In Jerusalem on Sunday, Hadron, an organization that advances Talmud study for women and that Miss Cohen Farber co-founded, is holding a first global women's Siam celebration. Ilana Kershan, a Jerusalem resident originally from Long Island, said she did not have the anger some women have over the Talmud's depiction of women as property. You can always learn in more depth. I'll never tire. It's a book you could spend your whole life reading. Whether women bring new insights or perspectives to discussions of the Talmud is the $1 million question, said Devorah Evron, director of the Susie Bradfield Women's Institute of Halakhic leadership at Midrashet Lindenbaum, a woman's seminary in Jerusalem, who was also taught, who had also taught Daf Yomi to women. Muslims organized huge protests across India, challenging Modi. On Saturday, some protesters held placards reading, I'm an Indian by choice, not by chance, a reference to the millions of Muslims who chose to stay in a secular India during the country's bloody 1947 partisan, partition, which Pakistan, which Pakistan was carved out of the subcontinent, oh, when Pakistan was carved out of the subcontinent as a homeland for Muslims. Since India gained its independence from Britain, the country's Muslims have never protested in such large numbers, said Farhan Nasir, 27, a doctor who attended the protest in Hyderabad and is Muslim. If you will break us, we will unite. For the first time, Muslims are protesting on the street in large numbers. Dr. Nasir said Muslims felt compelled to address the governing party's divisive politics and sectarianism. China replaces its top representative in Hong Kong with an enforcer. 
The Chinese government abruptly replaced its top representative in Hong Kong on Saturday evening, installing a senior Communist Party official with a record of difficult assignments in inland provinces that involved working closely with security services. The top representative, Wang Zemin, was replaced at the head of the powerful Central Liaison Office in Hong Kong by Luo Huini, the official Xinhua News Service said. The extradition bill supported by Mr. Wang last spring would have allowed Hong Kong residents to be sent to the opaque and off-harsh justice system in mainland China. Cries of revenge is coming at funerals for slain commanders in Iraq. Technically, Iran could attack U.S. bases in Syria or in Iraq, but that would drive an even greater retaliation from the United States that I don't think even Iran would wish to happen, said Lina Khatib, the head of the Middle East and North African program at Chatham House, a London-based research institute. General Ismail Khani, the newly appointed head of Iran's Quds Force, who said Iran's counterattack on American targets would have a large geographic reach. Another warning was issued by Abu Ali al-Husseini, the special operations chief of Khatib Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militia whose bases in Iraq and Syria the United States bombed a week ago. If you weren't man enough, why did you do it? The killing of General Soleimani was likely to further fuel anti-Americanism in Iran, as well as empower the country's hardliners over those called, who called for diplomatic efforts with the United States, said Hamidrizi Azizi, assistant professor of international relations at Shahid Beheshti University in Iran. White House notifies Congress of Soleimani strike under War Powers Act. Lawmakers expected the document to publicly lay out the White House's legal justification for the strike on General Soleimani, Iran's top security commander, who officials have said had been behind hundreds of American deaths over the years. While Republicans praised the action against General Soleimani as a definitive blow against a longtime enemy, Democrats voiced concern that the president was risking a new war in the Middle East and argued that the White House exceeded its legal authority by conducting the strike without explicit authorization from Congress. Senator Tim Kaine, Democrat of Virginia, <clears throat> introduced a resolution on Friday invoking the War Powers Act that would force a debate and vote in Congress to prevent further escalation of hostility, hostilities with Iran. Conflict with Iran threatens fight against ISIS. Former defense and intelligence officials said that the escalating American confrontation with Iran-backed Iraqi militias, directed by General Soleimani, will now mean that the American forces in both Syria and Iraq must worry as much about protecting themselves from attack as they do about fighting the Islamic State, a distraction that could seriously hamper the campaign. What's more, the intelligence and logistical support provided by the American military is equally necessary to the European and other military partners in the American-led international coalition against ISIS. Even smaller, even the smaller contingent of fewer than 1,000 American service members still deployed to fight the Islamic State in Syria would be impossible to sustain without support from the Americans inside Iraq. What's more, American officials have repeatedly reassured nervous Iraqis that the United States forces who returned in 2014, had come only to support the Iraq, Iraqi fight against ISIS. The American diplomat, the diplomats and military officers have always emphasized that the American forces were present only at the formal invitation of the Iraqi government and only to help increase the capacity of the Iraqi forces to combat ISIS themselves. Did the killing of Qasim Soleimani deter Iranian attacks, or encourage them? One of the many big questions looming over President Trump's decision to assassinate, assassinate Major General Qasim Soleimani is this. Was it a good idea? Some Iranian officials have called the killing of General Soleimani, who rose in, who, whose role in Iran has been likened to that of American Vice President Chairman of the 
Joint Chiefs and CIA Director, rolled into one, whose role in Iran has been likened to that of an American Vice President, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and CIA Director, rolled into one, an act of war. RuPaul Mehta, a political scientist at the University of Nebraska who studies Iran's military and nuclear program, also said the American strike could send a message to the surviving members of General Soleimani's network. Dr. Narang of MIT said the deterrence argument assumes a unitary rational actor. While he said that could apply to Iran, which may want to avoid war, it might not apply, say, to Hezbollah, which Iran backs in Lebanon. He was accused of enabling abuse. Then came a downward spiral. In April 2017, a group of students met with Dr. Bucci and his close colleague, Dr. Wheatley, to complain about sexual harassment within the department. On August 6, Dartmouth and the plaintiffs announced a $14.4 million proposed settlement, which included reforms that built on steps taken by Dr. Bucci and Dr. Wheatley. Dr. Heatherton, who was forced to retire, said in a brief interview outside his home recently that he had been shocked by Dr. Bucci's death and that the lawsuit had been unfair to both of them. Low interest rates worry that worry the Fed. Ben Bernanke has some idea. Ben, ben S. Bernanke, the former Fed Reserve Chair, said on Friday that the types of extraordinary steps the Fed employed to help pull the economy out of the Great Recession should make up for the central bank's limited room to cut interest rates in the event of another downturn. That is contingent on a big if. As long as the neutral interest rate, the setting at which Fed policy neither stokes nor slows growth, remains from 2 to 3%, counting inflation, the Fed should be able to rely on tactics like snapping up bonds and promising to keep rates low in the event of another recession. The former Fed chair, Janet L. Yellen, in an interview in San Diego, called very low rates the macroeconomic issue of our times. The Fed made 5% points worth of rate cuts, lowering the federal funds rate to near zero, in the last downturn before beginning to buy bonds and rolling out other unconventional policies to stimulate the economy. Mr. Brainard suggested that the Fed commit itself to keeping rates low for longer in advance, tying that pledge to the inflation rate, while also targeting rates on bonds with specific time horizons. U.S. military branches block access to TikTok app amid Pentagon warning. In a November blog post on TikTok's website, the general manager of TikTok U.S., Vanessa Pappas, wrote that data security was a priority and that the company wanted to be as transparent as possible for stakeholders in the United States. TikTok's data centers are located entirely outside of China. In October, Senator Chuck Schumer and Tom Cotton Democrat of New York and Republican of Arkansas, sent a letter to the acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, calling for an assessment of national security risks posed by TikTok and other China-based content platforms. All DOD personnel take annual cyber awareness training that covers the threats that social media can pose, as well as an annual operations security training that covers a broader issue of safeguarding information. Chief Warrant Officer Barry Lane, a United States Coast Guard spokesman, said in an email Friday, TikTok is not an application currently used on any official Coast Guard device. He said Coast Guard members go through security and cyber awareness training every year. Tensions abroad stir a whirlwind at Fort Bragg as soldiers deploy. It's just been a whirlwind, especially because I'm not used to being alone. In a community long accustomed to daily rhythms of military life, the flare-up in tensions between the United States and Iran in recent days reverberated immediately. At Fort Bragg, some 3,500 soldiers in the United States Army's 82nd Airborne Division were ordered to the Middle East in one of the largest rapid deployments in decades. Now the no-notice deployment has rocked families as soldiers were given very little time to pack up and leave. The heft of the distress over the deployment has come from the uncertainty over what awaits the soldiers and, in turn, 
their family and friends. Iranians in Los Angeles shed few tears for Soleimani, but what comes next? Over the weekend, far away from the developments in the Middle East, painful memories echoed in the minds of many Iranian political asylees and their families, even here in the peaceful Pacific, amid news that Major General Qasim Soleimani of Iran has been killed in Baghdad by a coordinated American military strike. General Soleimani's death is connected to the same long history of American intervention in the Middle East that so many in Iran have come to resent and fear. Mr. Fer- Mr. Farhanipur expressed a similar abiding connection to the country of his youth, even if he disagrees with the politics surrounding the Soleimani assassination. Looking beyond life in a homeless shelter with four children, the couple, who had, the couple had two children, Raylene and Mason, and in 2013, they moved to New York to be closer to Mr. Rodriguez's extended family. Rising tension between Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Johns led to a breakup in 2017, which culminated in March 2018 when Ms. Johns unexpectedly left for Florida, leaving him with the children. Visits to the movies, Chuck E. Cheese, and playgrounds are useful, he said, adding, with these kids, you need a hundred hands. In September, when his children were getting ready to return to school, Mr. Rodriguez needed help buying clothes and supplies. Judge awards nearly $13 million to women who say they were exploited, exploited by porn producers. The judge, Kevin E. <coughs> the judge, Kevin A. Enright, ordered that defendants to, ordered the defendants to remove the women's images and videos from the pornographic websites they control or own, and to take steps to remove them from other online sites. The crux of it is fraud. The defendant's lawyers had said the woman had signed contracts that stated the videos they appeared in could be used anywhere, anyhow, for any purpose. The distribution of the videos caused the women to experience severe harassment, emotional and psychological trauma, reputational harm, and to lose jobs and academic and professional opportunities, Judge Enright wrote. Shortly after one of the women, identified only as Jane Doe 1, hired a lawyer in an effort to obtain a copy of the document she had signed and to get her videos removed from the web, the pornographic video she had shot was sent to dozens of students, professors, and administrators at a law school, the judge wrote. California Democratic Party Settles Sexual Misconduct Lawsuit Mr. Hicks said that the party valued fairness, respect, and dignity for all and that the settlements were meant to acknowledge the accuser's service to our party. Citing an unnamed source, the Wall Street Journal reported that the state party would be paying more than $1 million to settle the claims. William, William, William Floyd, a former assistant to Mr. Bauman, said in April that Mr. Bauman, 61, had sexually assaulted him three times while he served as chairman of the state party and when he was chairman of the Los Angeles County Democratic Party. A few people cared but their voices were drowned out by so many others who didn't want to cross Eric or do anything to stop him. No one from the party has ever apologized to me for what happened. The other lawsuits, filed by three former party party employees and a Democratic activist, made a host of similar claims against Mr. Bauman and the party, accusing the former leader of sexually assaulting, groping, or harassing them, and the party of failing to stop the abuse. With split decision on impeachment, Maine Democrat risks a dual backlash. It prompted two lawmakers to switch their party affiliations. Representative Justin Amash of Michigan announced in July he would leave the Republican Party, where he had been the lone sitting member in favor of impeachment, to become an independent, while Representative Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey voted against both impeachment articles and left the Democratic Party the next day to become a Republican. Still, on impeachment, Mr. Golden's decision appears to have won over some voters in a state that prides itself on its tradition of fierce political independence. Brad Parscale, the president's campaign manager, posted polling on Twitter last month that showed voters in some of the most conservative Democrat-held districts said a vote vote for impeachment would either have no effect 
on their support or make them more likely to re-elect the representative. Democrats ask Supreme Court for quick decision on Obamacare. The appeal asks the court to review the case quickly during the court's current session, a schedule that would allow the outcome to be final before the 2020 presidential election. The Democratic states and the House, which intervened in the case to defend the health law, are asking the Supreme Court to review the Fifth Circuit's ruling immediately. The Supreme Court has already ruled in two major cases challenging core provisions of the health law. Divorce month, fact or fiction, do more couples split in January? Some parts of the internet, especially news articles from the last few years and even some law groups, have cast a dark cloud on the month suggesting it is a popular time for couples to divorce. The divorce rate picks up and falls based on a number of different factors. People start calling lawyers for information after the holidays, he said, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll file at the same time. A 2016 study conducted by the University of Washington analyzed divorce filings in Washington State from 2001 to 2015 and found they peaked in March and August, following the winter and summer holidays. Asked if there are any financial or tax benefits to filing for divorce in January, Ms. Myers said it all depends on your state's divorce laws and the facts of the case. Father and daughter, mistaken for deer, are fatally shot, officials say. A South Carolina man and his daughter were killed after they were mistaken for deer and were shot during a New Year's Day hunt, the authority said. The victims were among four hunters who were attempting to move deer, also known as driving deer, near Barricada Road in Walterboro when two hunters were shot after being mistaken for a deer, according to a statement released by the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Hunting season began on August 15th and ended on Wednesday, where the Drotti family was. Remains found on California Mountain belong to Manzanar detainee. The day Mr. Matsumura left with the fisherman, his wife tried to stop him. Bonnie Matsumura said, Ito Matsumura wrote a notice in the paper thanking the residents of Manzanar for their kindness in searching for Gichi Matsumura, who was lost in the mountains. A month after he was found, his family returned to Santa Monica, where they had been living before the relocation orders. Ito Matsumura worked two to three jobs to feed her children. Kazuo Matsumura told the Park Service, she is 96 and does not fear death, but do her children. How do we want to spend our last days, and what do we want of our loved ones? For Jonas Mikas, who was weakened by a blood disorder, the last days were busy. A few years back, the two had met with Rabbi Simone Hirshhorn, the Director of Religious Services, at the Hebrew home at Riverdale, where Helen lived for the last 11 years. Dying will be her last act as a parent, her last request that her children let her go. Wanted, a home for three million records. Inside its space on White Street, there are shelves upon shelves upon shelves of vinyl records and CDs. Signed Johnny Cash records hang close to nearly 1,800 other signed albums. Most record companies who were there when we started are gone, said Mr. George, who obtained many of the records from clubs and the city that either closed or went under. An obscure recording from the Sugar Hill Records label popped into his mind, Mr. Rogers recalled. How a voice of female, ex, female Gen X anxiety spends her Sundays. Its author, Ada Calhoun, ended up writing an entire book on the subject, Why We Can't Sleep, Woman's New Midlife Crisis. I'll probably go by 11th Street Bar, meet up with my friend Susanna Cahalan, Cah 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 and Karen Abbott for a planning meeting. It's usually between 20 and 30 women authors and journalists who meet once a month for a reading and to talk shop. Why your Uber ride can cost as much as a plane ticket. Chief among them, according to James Parrott, an economist who analyzes data on ride-hailing services, both as an independent academic and advisor to the city's taxi 
and limousine commission is the fact that Uber and Lyft had discounted prices in advance of each company's initial public offering last year. Most app-based drivers in New York City rely on Uber, Lyft, and the other companies as their sole employees, employers. They are not moonlighting to make extra money to fund their independent films. Although data for Uber and Lyft rides taken during the past few months is not yet available, Mr. Perez said, from the numbers he had seen, fares started to escalate in May, and at the same time, the use of Uber has slipped. Inside the fake igloo rooftop wars. There are now places in the city where you can sit in one rooftop fake igloo and watch people hanging out in other fake igloos below. According to Sal Rosenberg, the director of operations for 235th Rooftop Bar near the Empire State Building, the fake igloo wars have hit. Starting in mid-January, Hyatt-centric Times Square will have fake igloos on 54th floor, where views extend from the east to the Hudson Rivers. And in just a few days, the TWA Hotel at Kennedy International Airport will open a chalet for its local activity of plane spotting. In a burger world, can sweet green scale up? About a year ago, after raising $200 million in new capital from firms including Fidelity Investment and Evolution VC Ventures, Mr. Neiman appeared on CNBC and talked about sweet greens evolving from a mere restaurant into something more thought something more thought provoking, a food platform. On Kara Swisher's Recode podcast, he compared Sweet Green's kitchen technology to Uber's turn-by-turn directions for its drivers and discussed how blockchain and big data could evolve the menu into something like a Netflix queue. In just 18 months, Sweet Green has built nearly 700 outposts. As demand grows, the program could potentially turn office building lobbies into a million-dollar restaurant. Last fall, after a year-long negotiation, Sweet Green finally struck a deal with Uber Eats. Mr. Neiman said he was acutely aware that Sweet Green is not a tech company. He mocks Saudi Arabia on YouTube. Yes, he fears for his safety. Citizen Lab found digital footprints on Mr. Al Masirir's smartphones leading directly to Saudi Arabia. The most important thing for MBS is to take the money of the Saudi people and to empty their pockets. Mr. Al Masirir says in a video about Mohammed bin Salman and his plan to build a 500 billion smart city near the Red Sea. Judge Mark Eldridge wrote in an October 25, 2018 decision that Mr. Al Masirir was entitled to be recognized as a political refugee because he has a well founded fear of persecution if he is now returned to Saudi Arabia on the basis of his political opinions. Now, Mr. Al Masirir is turning again to the British courts, this time for a reckoning with the Saudis. Office treats bring out the worst in humanity. In violation of the policy, I've been successfully uploading grades using programs that are not Internet Explorer without incident. Should I try to get Internet Explorer or continue on in violation of the policy? Internet Explorer is a discontinued web browser introduced by Microsoft in 1995, and the best course of action would be to never think about it for the rest of your life. Even Microsoft employees publicly dissuade people from using Internet Explorer as their main default browser. Gut feelings are driving the markets. The United States stock market is trading at a very high level today. More than 30 years ago, the economist John Campbell and I developed what we have called the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio, a measure that enables the comparison of stock market valuations from different eras by averaging the earnings over 10 years, thus reducing some of the short-term fluctuations of each market cycle. High animal spirits in the stock market are often associated with the disparagement of traditional authority and expert opinion. The Work Diary of Anna Bond, whose work includes making diaries. 12.30 p.m. Over lunch, we continue to talk about holidays, 20, holiday 2020 ideas, because a few key accounts would like to see previews. 4.30 p.m. 
we met with the marketing team and talked about all and talked about all of our company holiday cards, who's going to be writing what cards to whom and how we are going to get them all out the door. 2 p.m. One of my designers popped in and we wrapped up discussions about our 2021 planners. And that has been Reading the Times for Sunday, January 5th, 2020. Reading the Times for Sunday, January 5th, 2020.